Regular viewers will know that we make high quality enamel pin badges featuring our countries with shoes designs. We now have 11 new ones, Antarctica, China, Hong Kong, Iceland, Wales, Northern Ireland, Norway, Switzerland, Turkey, Ukraine and London. The link to them and all of the original badges can be found below and get 10% off using the code at the end of the video. To start off with, what exactly is gerrymandering? Well, gerrymandering is the practice of drawing district boundaries unfairly in order to advantage a particular political party. To give an example, imagine you've got 50 voters, 20 Democrat and 30 Republican. They need to be arranged into five districts, each containing 10 voters. Depending on how we draw these districts, we can get a Republican supermajority, a proportional Republican majority, or even a Democrat majority. In the US, district lines are drawn every 10 years after the national census, which happened last in 2020. This means that over the next year, before the 2022 midterms, states will redraw their district lines. The process differs from state to state, because some states use multi-member districts and some are anomalies, like Nebraska, which has a unicameral state legislature. But for the most part, there are three sets of lines to be drawn. The districts of the state House of Representatives, the district lines for the state Senate, and the district line for the state's Congressional House of Representatives seats. So, who draws these lines? Well, again, that differs from state to state, but according to Professor Justin Levitt's All About Redistricting website, in 26 states, the state legislature has primary control over this. This means that politicians are drawing their own lines. Just to repeat this, they're drawing their own lines. This leads to two things. Firstly, massively unfair maps, which advantage whichever party was in charge of drawing the maps. And secondly, safe districts, which let politicians guarantee they'll keep their job in the next election cycle. Either way, these mean that voters aren't being properly represented. Unfair lines mean that the distribution of seats doesn't represent the distribution of votes, and safe seats mean that there's basically no point in voting at all if you live in that district. Also, state assemblies don't just draw their own lines, they draw other politicians' lines too. Often the state's House of Representatives is responsible for not just drawing their own lines, but also the congressional ones. This means that if you control the House of Representatives, you can draw lines to help you win seats in Congress. The Republicans realised this back in 2010, when they spent tons of money on small state legislative races, just so that they could have the power over the redistricting process, as part of a project called REDMAP, short for Redistricting Majority Project. This was a clever move. Instead of fighting in expensive congressional races, the Republicans won some cheap state legislative races and then just redrew the congressional lines in their favour. And thus, after 2010, Republicans were in charge of redrawing congressional districts in 23 states, or 55% of all congressional districts, whereas Democrats were only in control of 6 or just 10%. This led to some wildly gerrymandered maps. In Pennsylvania, for example, Republicans stuffed Democratic voters into just five congressional seats, which meant that in 2012, Republicans won 13 out of the 18 available congressional seats, despite just winning 49% of the vote. In order to do this, Republicans had to draw some truly ridiculous looking districts, including the now infamous 7th District, which looks like this. On the other side of the aisle, the Democrats gerrymandered Maryland so well that in 2014, despite winning 57% of the vote, Democrats won 7 out of the 8 congressional districts. As you can see from this map, they did this by stuffing all of the Republican voters into District 1 and gerrymandering the remaining districts into bizarre shapes. Anyway, Democrats tried to do their own red map in 2020 by spending big on state legislature races, but they failed to make as much of an impact. While Democrats won a supermajority in New York, giving them redistricting powers there, Republicans held most of their state legislatures and actually even flipped New Hampshire. So this time around, Republicans have redistricting control of about 188 congressional seats, or 43% of the total, whereas Democrats have control over just 73, or 17%, which means that we're in for another 10 years of Republican favouring maps. 
And as we said, state legislatures are currently in the process of redrawing the maps, which will have to be fixed before the midterms in 2022. So we should get a good idea of what they look like in the next year or so. Regardless of which party is in control of the process though, how do we stop gerrymandering? Well, the most effective way seems to be organized ballot initiatives. Since 2010, five states, Michigan, Colorado, Utah, Ohio, and Virginia, have passed anti-gerrymandering ballot initiatives. Michigan, Colorado, and Virginia created an independent redistricting commission, which already happens in Alaska, Arizona, California, Idaho, Montana, and Washington, while Utah created an advisory commission and Ohio approved a constitutional amendment banning partisan gerrymandering. In Missouri, voters also approved an anti-gerrymandering initiative known as Clean Missouri in 2018, before confusingly repealing it in 2020. And anti-gerrymandering activists have been forced to resort to ballot initiatives because, well, essentially the courts have been unwilling to get involved. In 2019, in response to two consolidated cases, one about Republican gerrymandering in North Carolina and one about Democratic gerrymandering in Maryland, the Supreme Court ruled 5-4 to four that gerrymandering was non-justiciable by federal courts. This means that each state's courts will have to decide for themselves whether or not to ban gerrymandering. According to the majority ruling, this was in part because, quote, none of the proposed tests for evaluating partisan gerrymandering claims meet the need for a limited and precise standard that is judicially discernible and manageable. Essentially, the Supreme Court said that there wasn't any objective measure for when a map was being overly gerrymandered. For example, let's take a look at Maryland's third district again. It's clearly gerrymandered. We can all see that. But how do you prove it? What do you actually mean by gerrymandered? Well, the main metric proposed was the efficiency gap. The efficiency gap is defined as the difference in parties' wasted votes divided by all of the votes cast in the election. An efficiency gap of zero typically indicates fairly drawn districts, because it means that both parties have similar amounts of wasted voters. And this will become obvious once we've applied it to a few examples. Let's take another look at our imaginary districts. In the Republican supermajority, Democrats waste 20 votes, whereas Republicans waste only 5, making the gap 0.3 in favour of the Republicans. In the second one, the Democrats waste 10 votes and the Republicans waste 15, so it's a 0.1 for the Democrats. And in the third one, the Democrats waste 5 and the Republicans waste 20, so it's a 0.3 for the Democrats. This efficiency gap method was developed by Democrats for a legal case about gerrymandering in Wisconsin, which went all the way to the Supreme Court as Gill v. Whitford. The Democrats argued that the maps, as drawn by the Republican state legislative chamber, had an efficiency gap of 0.12 in favour of the Republicans, who won 65% of the state legislature with just 48% of the vote in 2014. 0.12 doesn't seem that bad when compared with the examples above, but that's in part because the efficiency gap isn't a great measure of gerrymandering when comparing two parties with significantly different popularity. When the two competing parties are equally popular, as the Democrats and Republicans were in Wisconsin, fairly drawn maps should produce an efficiency gap of closer to zero. So even 0.12 is extreme. Anyway, the Wisconsin State Court was convinced by it and ruled against the Republicans, but unfortunately for the Democrats, the Supreme Court wasn't as convinced, because they rejected the efficiency gap as a valid measure of gerrymandering, in part because while gerrymandering always means a non-zero efficiency gap, a non-zero efficiency gap doesn't always mean gerrymandering. Take our earlier examples. Even the proportional outcome had an efficiency gap of 0.1, because the efficiency gap only works under certain specific conditions. For example, the different parties' support has to be roughly equal, and all candidates from the same party command similar levels of support. However, while the federal Supreme Court wasn't convinced, anti-gerrymandering efforts have had success in state courts, notably Pennsylvania and North Carolina. In Pennsylvania, anti-gerrymandering containers used Markov chain Monte Carlo sampling, a fancy mathematical process, to prove that Pennsylvanian maps were unfair. Essentially, this involved making little random changes to the maps and measuring the partisan bias. 
If on average the map gets less partisan as it's randomly altered, then it's probably gerrymandered. This is because if the map has been carefully gerrymandered to benefit one party over the other, then the random changes should probably even things out. In the 2018 case in Pennsylvania, Markov chain Monte Carlo sampling showed that 99.99% of the time, the Republican drawn maps would be more fair when subjected to random changes. The Pennsylvanian Supreme Court were persuaded by this argument and forced the state legislature to change the maps, arguing that it violated the state's constitution. This meant that in 2018, the Republicans won 9 out of the 18 congressional seats, with 47% of the vote, compared to the 13 seats they'd won in 2016, with 52% of the vote. A significant change. In North Carolina, a state court ruled that a Republican state legislature had to redraw its gerrymandered maps, arguing that, as in Pennsylvania, it violated the state's constitution, specifically the clauses guaranteeing free elections, equal protections under the law, and freedom of speech and assembly. Essentially then, while the Supreme Court has said that it's not going to get involved, you can still fight gerrymandering via ballot initiatives and on the state court level. As a last thing, if you do really care about this topic, and really you should, then go and take a look at the Democratic National Redistricting Committee. The NDRC was set up by Obama and his Attorney General Eric Holder in response to precisely this issue. Don't worry, the word democratic isn't related to the Democrat Party. They're a pressure group against gerrymandering of any sort, whether it be by Republicans or Democrats. For example, they successfully pressured Democrats in New Jersey to stop gerrymandering in 2018. Regardless, we'll leave a link to their website down below. So if you want to find out more and potentially even join the fight against gerrymandering, then that's where to go. As I said at the start of the video, we have 11 new badges and you can pick them up individually or as a complete collection for a discounted price. You can also grab the brand new United Kingdom or Nordic badge sets. The store's linked below and you can get 10% off if you use the code JERRY. Thanks so much for your support. Also, be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon to be notified every time we make a new video. Special thanks to our Patreon backers who make videos like this one possible. And if you want to see your name at the end of videos, then you too can back us on Patreon. The link to that is in the description.